it's Dr. Ken here with you again and uh, we're looking at learning independently number 14 in our cognitive toolbox no one learns in a vacuum or no one learns alone so interdependence rather than independence we're social beings by definition so why do we prize independence when in the end we all actually end up depending on each other for most learning at tech technical college in a class or a community enterprise so we need to take advantage of the situation not fight against it as individuals There are six good reasons why we should learn in community. The goal and the resources are the same for each one of us, or each person in the learning or the class community. Two, managing differences in ideas actually helps everyone. Helps everyone build better mental models. Communities keep each other accountable. They keep each other on track and going forward at the appropriate rate. Four, managing resources together means that everyone gets a fair go. Everyone gets an opportunity. In a lot of technical college learning contexts, there's not one piece of equipment per person. You often have to do things in small groups and share things. So we have to manage our resources. Five, conflict is an opportunity to change and grow. We won't all agree about everything all the time, but well-managed conflict is an opportunity to change and grow. And feedback from peers is a very powerful way to learn. Very powerful. So learning together, correcting each other, affirming each other as learners together is a very strong and powerful way to learn. So, number one, you're all in the same boat. The goal and resources are the same for each of us in a learning situation. All resources are finite in a learning community. The same amount of limitations or access is offered to all. In a community, you make this known to all and shared by all so that everyone benefits from the situation. The resource that is often missed in the classroom is the resource of each student can be to each other. That's a very important aspect. Quite often we think about the resources as the textbook. We think about the resources as the digital oscilloscopes or the multimeters. In actual fact, one of the strongest resources you have in a classroom space is each other. So help each other in class. Sit with those who you get along with and assist each other. Start learning in micro communities within the larger classroom community. In electrical, this is often the case in practicals because of the limited amount of resources and equipment we have. We often create a micro community by putting two or three people together and they go and do a practical together because of the limited amount of equipment and resources. So learn to learn in the larger classroom community and in the micro community of doing small things and activities together. But in that small group, keep each other accountable. Don't let one person do all the work. Make sure everybody shares the load. to express an opinion then duck so again this is just managing differences in ideas that helps everyone your ideas and opinions don't have to be per perfectly right or even close for everyone to benefit from the discussion even if your idea is quite off or wrong the fact that we're going to discuss it your peers etc are going to help you and it's going to help them. If you want to express an opinion safely, start with, I think it works like this, or I understand the concept this way. That way you're opening up an option that says, 
I think I'm understanding, but I'm not quite sure, and I want your help. If you can't form an opinion, then ask, I'm not sure about XXXX. Can anyone else explain it to me? Often other students' explanation is more helpful than the teacher's explanation. I've been a teacher for 20 plus years, and the way I explain particular concepts is often the way I best understand it, not necessarily the way you best would like to receive it. So getting a picture from others is often a very good idea. This is because as a teacher, I'm a bit uh, fixated on my particular view, but other views can be equally as valid and equally as helpful. Number three, who's the sheriff? Who's in charge? Learning communities keep each other accountable for time, physical resources and effort. Most tech classes have a four hour time period. So allowing for some settling in time and break time, you have probably approximately three and a half hours. A good learning community will keep each other accountable for the time, not the teacher. So making sure you stay focused and getting the work done, getting the concepts understood and making some meaning and therefore some learning. Physical resources seem easier to manage in a classroom community. This is because they're more tangible. So time is a hard thing to manage because you can't actually see time. It's a bit like electrical physics, but it's real, time is real. So physical resources seem easier to manage because they're more hands-on, more tangible. Effort is a large issue. Staying focused and getting the most from the available time is an important aspect. Most leave this policing to the teacher. Why? Because we don't want to be seen as the odd one out, the goody two-shoes. Well, to be honest, you're probably only ever going to get one opportunity in this one place to learn this particular electro-technology concept. So be a goody two-shoes and take the opportunity and keep everybody on task and learning for your benefit as well as theirs. So what is a fair go I've called number four? So managing resources together means everyone gets a fair go. Taking, talk, sorry, talking to your mates inappropriately so others can't hear or concentrate is not having a fair go or giving others a fair go. You're not having a fair go by side conversations and you're not giving others a fair go. Coming to class late, making it a disturbance is not giving others a fair go or yourself a fair go. Get to class five minutes early. Every minute is going to count. Not reading ahead or not uh, Doing out of class study is not giving yourself a fair go or others that may benefit from your learning and skill. Always taking from the learning and rarely giving back is not having a fair go. Remember, we learn in community, we learn interdependently, we don't learn independently. Number five, some appropriate conflict is good and it can be very good different. Conflicts is an opportunity to change and grow, but it's a matter of attitude. You've got to be prepared to want to change and want to grow. As iron sharpens iron, learning communities should encourage a diversity of opinions and views. So it is good to have differences, different opinions, different views, different ways of solving a similar problem. It will help everyone if managed well. Remember the nature of electrical physics requires mental models to cope with the complexity. My mental model will be different to others and so on. 
this is okay and it is appropriate to have a different model. We should always be ready to have our model challenged and adjusted if necessary. Number six, all feedback is good feedback. Feedback from peers is a powerful way to learn if done with the appropriate tone and respect. I can't overstate that learning between students is extremely powerful. Not only teaching each other, but actively learning closely together. I had this advantage during my tech days with a young fellow by the name of Colin. Colin and I hit it off in the first few weeks. The only thing we had in common was that we were both doing apprenticeships in industrial context, but on the opposite sides of Sydney, as it were. We sat together, we learned together, we challenged each other, we had lunch together every Monday for three years straight. We helped each other and we helped each other to understand. We used smart ways to learn. So these days, it was all before you had coloured textbooks. In actual fact, we didn't have a textbook. We had student workbooks that were just in black and whites and if you were fortunate, there were some black and white photocopied pictures. There were no smartphones, there was no internet. There's just a different way to learn to what most of you have access today. So take advantage of what you have access to. Your coloured textbooks, your smartphones, your access to the internet. So... What are the take-homes for learning interdependently? One, we're all learning community to some extent. So help yourself by helping others. It's easy as that. By helping others, you're actually helping yourself. Make the effort to amplify the opportunities a community offers. In other words, have a community mindset, not an independent mindset. Remember to contribute first. Don't wait for someone else to contribute. You contribute first. And then the learning community will feed your learning. And fourth, don't forget, you are all in the same learning boat. Help to keep it afloat by participating together. It is all about participating and learning together. So I hope you've enjoyed and understood what it is to work interdependently rather than independently.